To add more value to our course, I thought we should try to draw the diagrams together. To do that, we should use a UML diagramming tool or modeling tool. Let's search together for a tool that we can use. If we do a Google search for UML tool, you will, you will get a huge list of tools out there. There are a lot of tools out there. And if we search and if we find our search to find a UML free tool, we will end up with another good list of tools. In Wikipedia, you can find a listing of unified modeling language tools. Let's look at some of those tools together. Here is a good listing of some of the UML tools out there and a good comparison between the tools. Some of them are free and some of them are paid tools and some of them can generate code and some of them cannot generate code and some can support UML version 2 and some of them cannot. Actually, I decided to use a tool called Omelet, U-M-L-E-T, it's pronounced as Omelet. I picked this tool for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's free, so all of us can use it. Second, it's very easy to use. And although it doesn't support the latest version of U-M-L, but it has a very nice feature, which is you can create your own notations. So even if there is something in the latest UML uh, that Yomlet doesn't support, you can create it yourself and add it to the library and use it as much as you can. If you look at the website of Omelet, you can see it works on Windows, Unix, and Macintosh. And there's a very good tutorial video at the first page of Omelet. It's about four minutes. I'm not gonna play it here because you can watch it on your time. I don't want to waste your time right here. The video simply shows few features of Omelet. You can go to the download page from the home page and you can either download the standalone version or the Eclipse plugin version. Eclipse plugin is for those of you who use Eclipse as a development environment. I'm talking about the Java developer out there. If you're not, a Java developer and you don't use Eclipse, you still can use a standalone version. I'm gonna download the standalone version and we're gonna use it together. Both of them are exactly the same interface. There is no difference between them at all. After downloading the UML standalone version, you simply need to unzip it and that's it. You are ready to go. Here's the first interface you can see from Omelette. I will talk about few features that were not mentioned in the tutorial video of Omelette. I thought those features are very, very important ones. It simply makes life very easy for you using Omelette and they save a lot of time and make your work very productive and efficient. Let's look at the use case notations and let's try to build some use cases together. Here we have use case one and then double click on the library on the right you will see the object use case one and you can change and edit all the text in the property tab on the right now the good part let's say we picked this arrow which is a generalization arrow it's a dotted arrow with a closed white look at the properties of this arrow it says here lt equals dot greater than greater than the good thing is that you can change the type of the arrow just from the properties for example if you thought that you wrote the wrong arrow and you put it in place you don't need to delete it and bring another one you can still just modify this arrow and you are ready to go this is very 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 time saver for all of us let's see how it works see here we just use the dash instead of the dot and the arrow became a solid line if we remove one of the greater than symbols we have an open arrow if we put a three greater than symbols we have a closed black arrow and we can simply change the direction of the arrow by moving the dot or the dash from one side to the other let's now draw another use case object and you can change the background color or the foreground color of the object. 
on the bid right here and you have it at the yellow use case. The good thing is that if you need to create another use case, you don't always need to double click on the object from the library on the right. You can double click on an object from the page yourself. So once you created, for example, a use case with a yellow background color, you don't need to do that for further objects that you create. Just double click on one of the objects on your page and it will duplicate it automatically for you. Again, this is a huge time saver feature. Another feature is that if you saw that all your use case objects will have a yellow background color, you have the chance to change the properties of the objects in the library itself. So if we change the background color of the use case object in the library to yellow, we can duplicate the objects in the library and change the background color of one of them to yellow. Now in your library, you will always have a use case object with a yellow background color and you can change the name of that object for example i'm gonna name all my use cases starting with ew stands for expert wave so i'm gonna put it there in the library the use case name ew underscore use case now anytime i double click on the ew use case object from the library it will move to my page automatically again this is a huge time saver Another good feature of Omelet is uh, collective objects. Here, for example, we have a collective objects for actors and their generalization. If we look at the properties of this object, we can see that we have actor one and underneath it, we have actor two identity to the right and then actor three, four, five, and seven. That means we can add actors and remove actors and change the identification to create whatever hierarchy of actors very easily. Here we're gonna add actor four and add actor seven underneath actor two and the hierarchy just pop up automatically for us. Same thing we can do with the generalization of the use cases. We can add move and delete use cases from the properties tab for this collective object very easy. The same feature can be found in the all-on-one activity diagram. You can create, we haven't talked about activity diagrams yet, but you can create activity diagrams by adding rounded rectangles and hours between the rounded rectangles and so on. But again, using the all-in-one activity diagram in Omelette, you can add objects much easier and faster than you would imagine. Let's change the zooming of the diagram here. We can see we have a very, very complicated diagram. And if we look at the properties of this collective object, we can see, of course, again, we haven't learned, we haven't talked about activity diagrams yet. But again, I here just add a thimble line to add a new activity in the UML activity diagram. That's very easy and that's very quick instead of adding around the rectangle and then adding hours and then moving objects around and so on. You have the option to save your diagrams as PDFs directly. So again, I'm gonna use Omelette in my demonstrations about creating UML diagrams but you are free to use whatever you want. I'm just using this because it's very easy and very straightforward. And again, we have the options or ability to add our own notations if needed. Hope you like it. Thank you.